So one of my students got the recent cue card about describe a painting or drawing that you like. I would like to answer that cue card as well as the part three practice questions. And when I develop my story later, I want you to observe my delivery because I don't want you to feel unconfident, unnatural, or even scared when you take your IELTS speaking exam. We want to make sure uh, that uh, we feel comfortable in speaking English and of course when we deliver our story because that's what the examiner really wants from us as students. So observe my delivery and how I develop my story. My name is Julius. Welcome to IELTS Dragon. Let's get started. Let me talk about Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, which was painted in the late 1800s. I first knew about the painting when I was a high school student in our art class. I had the chance to see a copy of that painting when we had an excursion to one of the museums in our city. When I first set eyes on the painting, I was mesmerized because it appeared as if the painting was moving because of the swirls uh, uh, painted in the sky in the painting. That was really adorable. Then I couldn't disregard the color combination because the colors yellow, blue, black, and white simply blended together that perfectly depicted a beautiful view of the night. And as far as I remember, I was lost in thought when I saw the village in the painting. I imagined myself being one of the villagers living in the village while enjoying the beautiful and tranquil night. Honestly, Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night had so much impact on me, especially when I learned how his uh, or how troubled his uh, personal life was um, well that uh, painting was incredibly beautiful however it's a good example of irony because the painter did not have a beautiful and tranquil life uh, he was going through mental health uh, issues uh, that eventually claimed his life uh, anyway that painting is one of the best uh, because uh, not only because of its visual representation, but also because of how it uh, makes the audience feel uh, calm. Had he not created that masterpiece, we wouldn't have known how great he was as an artist. That's how you tell a story. Well, what do you notice? Uh, I added emotions, uh, facial expression. My facial expression changes from time to time, of course, depending on the context of my story. And I used intonation, the rising and falling of my voice, because I didn't want to sound monotonous or flat. Uh, you have to make sure to use intonation so that uh, you don't sound robotic uh, or boring. You know, you don't want to be a boring storyteller. Nobody enjoys listening to someone who is a boring storyteller. So, you know, apply all these three important uh, things. Um, emotions, facial expression, and of course, intonation. When you apply all of these three in your story, you will surely appear natural and confident. So we have to prove to our examiner that we can speak naturally, con confidently, and spontaneously. And that's how we achieve a higher mark. Anyway, if you're busy and you don't have enough time to prepare ideas for all the recent cue cards, then get my latest reviewers. My reviewers are currently on sale, and I'm so proud to say that my reviewers helped many students achieve their target band scores. So, if you want to prepare strategically or efficiently, then get my latest reviewers. You can get them by clicking the link in the comment section or by sending me an email. I will send you sample reviewers and see for yourself if you need the full version of my reviewers. So send an email today or click the link in the comment section. All right, I'd like to move on to part three. Let's answer part three practice questions. Get ideas on how I discuss my answers logically or sensibly in part three. Let's get started. 
What kinds of art are the most valuable in terms of monetary value? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't have any idea about that as I'm not familiar with valuable art. However, I guess those paintings or sculptures that are created by well-known artists, because obviously those are masterpieces. Those pieces of art are one of a kind. For instance, Leonardo da Vinci's works or Michelangelo's. Artworks similar to those are what I think are valuable with regard to monetary value. Why do some paintings have a higher value than others? My answer is similar to what I've just said. That's because of how valuable or prominent the artist is. If the artist is well-renowned, it is expected that his pieces of artwork are of a high value compared to others. It's so rare to see an expensive painting that's created by an ordinary painter. Although there are some other factors that need to be taken into account, the social status of the artist is what I think is the main reason for that. Would you say art is important? Oh wow, that's a hard question. Uh, let me think. I believe it is important because art is an expression of creativity and emotions. It inspires, educates, informs, and stimulates people's imagination, which are all necessary for our personal and professional growth. As for artists, crafting a piece of artwork is their creative way of processing their emotions to make them heard or valued. Well, art wouldn't exist if it wasn't important after all. Why do people keep paintings for a long time? First of all, not everyone keeps paintings for such a long period of time. Only collectors do this because they see the value of each painting. The rarer the painting is, the longer they keep it, as it'll become more valuable in the future. But that's not the only reason at all. They do keep valuable paintings because those serve as a status symbol. These two are what I see as the reasons why there are some people who are fond of keeping paintings indefinitely. Your aim in part 3 is to discuss your answers logically. You have to avoid beating around the bush. Answer what's really asked. Well, be as natural as possible. If you don't have an experience or if you don't know how to answer it, then act naturally. Just like what I did in one of the questions in part 3 that we studied earlier. All right, so if you want to know more how to discuss uh, your answers in part three or how to formulate answers in part three, get my latest reviewers. They are on sale at the moment. Click the link in the comment section or send an email. I will send you samples. Till next time.